Now the tools you'll need to do this job are pretty simple, a Torx T20 and a number three Allen key. I ended up having to use an adapter to make this thing work because it's the only one I could find, which was in a smaller set, and a knife. And if you can find it, a number 10 wrench. Very much required for getting the solid cable itself off because there are two nuts underneath here. Hello everyone and welcome to Past Preserver. This is a 2022 Bad Boy MZ Magnum. And if you've seen in my shorts, I've been having a few issues with this. Mostly, I was using it the other day, I went to push up on the throttle, and the wire snapped. And I know the reason why. This is actually kind of a common problem with these, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. As you can see, the rubber coating on this throttle cable is all melted. What that did was send the rubber into the cable itself and made it very hard to move. This was kind of some poor routing because this cable is actually touching up against this valve cover bolt. And that would allow this line to heat up. So what are we going to do to fix this? And more importantly, what are you going to do to prevent this? This is also common with the choke cable, even though I've yet to have any melting on it yet. The first step to replace this throttle cable is to remove this control panel. This is a number three Allen key, and there are four bolts here you have to remove. So first thing we're going to want to do is get this throttle knob off. Best method I found was bring it all the way back and give it a good hard pull. And it should come off there. It just sets on. The next step is going to be to break these two bolts loose. They're nutted on the bottom, so you just want to break them loose up here, and then we'll take our four out of the control panel. Now we lift up our control panel. As you can see, a lot of grass and stuff gets built up down in there. And now you can see the nuts we need to get off. You're going to take a number 10 and your screwdriver. Take these off. The next step is going to come down here with a pair of side cutters and snip this zip tie. This one's okay. It's not routed through there. Come back here. This one needs to go. This here just kind of pops down and out, and you can get it out from underneath there. And then snip this zip tie. Now, as you can see, this is all loose. So our next step is to come back here. Next, take a T20 to this screw, loosen it up. You can also remove this back cover, but I don't really want to do that. This screwdriver is just a little long. As you can see, there's a simple Z-bend right here. You just want to pull over like that. Pull it out like so. Now all we got to do is grab the top end, pull it right out of there. Now that we have this out, we can take a closer look at it. As you can see, it heated up. And it melted right in there. And I don't know what this pink is. I thought it was grease at first, but it's actually plastic. And that's got this line very hard to move. Well, now I can move it, of course. But apparently it was locked up enough to where we broke up here. As you can see, the wire is now, well, <laughs> can't even get, show up. It's now dangling where it fell off. It fell off. All right. It's here somewhere. But it broke up there because of this, and just a poor design in general. If this would have never had the rubber coating, if they would have cut it off like back here, like before it got to the engine, rubber coating would be good to here, and then this would have been okay bare. So how can you prevent this on yours? I'd say just come up here, take it off, and cut that coating off. It comes off fairly easy with a razor blade, I think. 
I'm going to do that with all my stuff now. I'm going to leave that for show and tell later. But look at that. That would have solved all my issues. Well, plan A kind of failed, so we're not going to go with it. This is an Arnold throttle control kit. It's kind of a universal kit. comes with three different throttle controls. And I took the one part off of it and popped this off. And by the time I got done fiddling with it, I'm not real happy with how that is. And yeah, it's on there, but for how long is that going to pop off again? And it's a little long, it's 54 inches. So we're going to go with plan B. To be clear, I'm not putting this kit down. This is actually a really good kit if you are missing a throttle control or just want for like a push mower, throw this on there. Great idea. Has clear instructions on the back, how to do everything. Very good idea. And plan B is this poor little pool on pro. It's just become a parts mower at this point. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I've stolen things off of it left and right. But uh, this throttle cable, I do believe, is just long enough. I already took the front off, just now torques exactly the same way the other one is. We're going to put it on there. Well, there's two screws, and the second one's way up underneath there, and it's being a pain to get out. So let's send this thing out in the blaze of glory. It's going to the scrapyard anyway. This thing's pretty well had, and it was a high-hour unit, and... It's ready to go to the scrapyard. Ah, there's one thing holding it. Ta-da! Was that necessary? Not at all. I could have got this out. Was it fun? Oh, yes. And I might as well have some fun with it. I don't do this very often, the stuff. And sometimes it's good a little frustration out on something. Especially when this is your fault. Are you happy now? The sacrifice has been made. I kind of sanded it down and hit it with the torch a bit. It kind of came back to a nicer look. I'm just going to leave this end on here. We're going to route that down where it was. That's going to be difficult to show. So if you buy the right one, your routing is going to go through that hole with the wires over here and follow on back through here, loop to here, and down to here. But the way this is, it's too short to do all that. I have it coming directly back through here and then down to here. I wanted to make sure this would all fit before I went and tightened everything up, which it will. It's just, I don't like how close this whole thing is to the muffler, but it's above it. It's not touching it. That's the only way this will work. So we're gonna cut this rubber line off, maybe to, well, here. I don't want it rubbing, rubbing against the wires and stuff. So maybe about here we'll come and cut that rubber off. Be very careful with the knife. It takes a little bit of doing, but once you get started, it peels off there fairly easy. Sharp blade helps too. So I'm gonna hook up the throttle, put these four bolts back in, and then we'll hook up the back, and we should be good to go. So I have everything hooked back up. The routing's okay, I don't think, unless I have a stick come up around here, I don't think I'm gonna be in too much trouble. This is going here. We're kind of going down and around, which is kind of how the choke cable is, which bad boy seems to deem okay. So, even though their idea melted, make sure you put it in this little slot of three. This one was in the middle. It might have been a different one in the, middle, in the beginning of the video. I'll put text here if it was. But um, 
that's where it wants to work for this throttle cable because it's a little bit shorter. I do have this backwards. <coughs> Which is fine, I don't care either way. I kind of like that it puts that out of my operator station. It's back a little ways. I do like this bigger knob on here. Well, on your knob, all you got to do is put it back in the slot and push down until it hits these little, a little easier on the machine, these little notches, and you're done. Just make sure you have everything zip tied out of the way and Hopefully, that'll last you a lot longer with that rubber coating being off. Hopefully, you shouldn't have to change your throttle cable after 45.6 hours. That's just kind of ridiculous. I do highly recommend cutting that rubber sheathing off. I think it's causing more harm than good back there. Up here, it's definitely useful because it's rubbing up against wires and stuff, and you don't want steel rubbing up against wire. So if you like this mess of a video, leave a like, hit subscribe. There'll be more to come. Hopefully I can get a little better at this. This would have been a lot easier if I had bought the right part, which right now I actually have another mower on the way. Subscribe. Keep an eye out for that. Because this here, I have a feeling I'm overdoing it with these seven acres worth I take care of. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm having some premature, well, these aren't even premature failures on this thing. They're just stupid little things like this tie down. That could have ended my day. I don't know if you can see down there on the fan pulley, but it's a little ate up down in there because the two rods came loose and there are wing nuts on top of here. And they just dropped right on down into the uh, um, fan pulleys. Then there's that. There was something else that was giving me issues. The fuel gauges are known for going bad in this, these things, but they're a pretty standard fuel gauge, so it doesn't really matter what you're buying. It's got that style fuel gauge. They're all going to go bad at some point. And these parking brake cables, they're just a cable, just like what that is, but a little bit thicker. And they're known to snap off there. Nope, I lied. They look like they're about the same thickness. Eh, it might be a little thicker. Same idea though. Just something else to go wrong.